Hello, visuals, and welcome back to the Visual Guys podcast with me, the fat man Dan, and just me, myself, and I. Because if you listen to the Miss Marvel uh, episode one spoiler heavy review, You'll know that I'm on my own this weekend. There's no Chris Teenyberge. He is busy with work and life and being a grown-up. And, you know, we've got to get that dollar-dollar bill. And he was offered more dollar-dollar bill from work. As we offer him zero dollar-dollar bill. So it was a bit of a no-brainer. Um, so this part of the entertainment news would usually be uh, entertainment news. But instead, I'm just going to simply do a Jurassic World Dominion spoiler-heavy review. And I have got... A fair bit to say about this film, but it's it's a shame. We will get Chris's opinions on it next week because um, Chris and me have two different opinions about this film. Um, so it obviously makes more of an interesting conversation to get the back and forward. Um, so we'll definitely hear from what Chris has to say about this film, even though I've heard it on the walk over from the cinema. We did see it on release day, but obviously this review's going up, what, the, come out the Friday, Saturday, and then Monday, four or three or four days later. Um, but not only that, before we get to the spoiler heavy review visuals, I need to apologise because it's just my fat annoying voice, because that's right, my voice is fat. But not only that, when I speak on my own for too long, it's going to happen any second sleep, it's because I think about it. I keep you on I'm not tired at all, I've had a decent night's kip, I've, I've had, you know, I haven't exactly done anything strenuous, strenuous today. But yeah, I'm um, chatting away, so I'm so you gotta have, you gotta have yawn interruptions as I have a swag on my coffee. But we're gonna have a couple of minutes of just me and you guys chilling. I'm quite literally we're in the bedroom. I'm laying on my bed. Make of it what you will. Let's fantasize a little bit. One of you can come in dressed as a Dalek, and we'll see what happens. Uh, so coffee breaks. Usually when I have a coffee break, Chris is there to ramble on. So every now and then you'll get a bit of like dead air. But then again, I guess when I talk all the time, it's dead air because I'm just an annoying bastard. And to be fair, let's be honest, I don't think a lot of people listen, so we are technically dead air anyway. This is this is mental. I'm just le- literally, I'm literally right. I'm literally, honestly, like literally, just laying on my bed, chilling with a brew in my hand and my feet up, chatting away. I'm gonna put it up online for people to say, "Damn, you are fat." Moron. Who oh, is the current side playing its music? Shut the fuck up! I oh, actually, was, what the? As soon as I said that, it stopped. What the fuck? Where's Puppy gone as well? The Opt- Optimus Primal's gone somewhere. Dog, where the fuck art thou? At least you haven't got him in the background kicking off with a squeaky ball or a. Uh, he always loves to kick off. We do. I technically, I, I guess, have some entertainment news and it's not really news it's just miss marvel's officially out the episode one review podcast is up uh, episode one was great but you want all my thoughts and opinions go check that uh, uh, episode out but all right, we got the black adam trailer and uh, th- this this is an interesting one because i was a bit hesitant of how the rock was going to be black adam and whatnot because i purely want him as a villain i only really know him as a villain but we know the rock's always usually the well since Scorpion King, or well, sorry, since his uh, appearance of Scorpion King in The Mummy, The Mummy 2 or whatever it was, um, he's always the good guy. But this trailer doesn't necessarily show him as a complete good guy. I don't know quite how they're going to do it. There's rumours of Superman appearing in this. It's a very, It does have a feel of a rock film to it, which, uh, listen, I love Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He seems like the most nicest guy in the world. But all of his films quite literally are just the same films which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're up for a rock film that he's not going to disappoint but they're always the same i i, I want to know how much of his influence he's had on the overall um feel and um story and and structure and um layout of this film uh so so we'll see when it comes out but initially though i am excited it does look good i love the shazam and black adam and uh, world uh, it's all it's always fascinated us. I think they're great characters, so I can't wait to see I can't wait to see Black Adam, I can't wait to see how he meets up against or faces off, hopefully potentially against Shazam. This is gonna be uh, interesting. Um 
So yeah, the, the Rock's Black Adam. Yeah. At the minute, I'm gonna stick with a with a solid, very excited. Okay, so I'm still very excited. But at the end of that film, I could come out going, oh, there was too much Rock. Rocks. I'm quite literally as well looking at a figure of Black Adam just not being bold. The Rock suits the role, but the boldness doesn't. Is that is that some sort of weird? Is that weird of me? Is that is that some sort of ism, like sexism? But hairism, I don't know. The, the, the boldness doesn't suit. Um, what else is killing it? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh my God, how good is that show visuals? Like, it's, it's disturbingly and ridiculously good. I don't understand how a show can be so fucking utterly beautiful to watch. Um, and I'm not even the biggest Star Wars guy. We, we've actually got our first ever Star Wars related superhero Wednesday coming up soon. So definitely fucking check that out. Um... But yeah, I, I'm in love with this show and I, I don't ever want it to stop. I just want more of it and more of it. That fucking episode four was beautiful. But tomorrow, at the time I listen to this, we get episode five and episode two of Miss Marvel. So excited for that. Um, so yeah, everyone's still crushing it. Have I heard any other sort of new stuff lately? No, there's a new South Park special up. Go check that out. Streaming Wars, it's fucking hilarious. Um, Stranger Things is pretty much, I guess, dead at the minute. Even though that song's still playing, but part two is going to be up quite literally in what three ish or so weeks. Go for a break. I quite literally just dribbled. Oh, how many times have I said quite literally? I'm such a repetitive twat. Dribbled, Kofi all over the, the fat chin. Um, but Jurassic World Dominion, a film that I was so. So, so excited to watch because I love the Jurassic Park. Uh, the original Jurassic Park, an absolute OG uh, in terms of historic films. Not necessarily for its age, but just, you know, it absolutely is a typical, beautiful popcorn film. It's what you go to the cinema for, really. Um, yeah, so, and uh, the, the Jurassic Worlds, I know they've been hit and miss with a lot of people, uh, but overall, I've absolutely loved them. I love Chris Pratt. I, I love everything they're doing. But this one, last night, another coffee break, because this shit's about to get downhill. Ah, so, Jurassic World Dominion. What did you do so wrong? That, 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 before we get negative, because there's a lot of negatives, uh, the, the heavy spoilers as well, visuals. Let's think about the positives. Visually, uh, th there's not too much I can, I can dispute with it. I love the fact that we see uh, Blue and a little baby. I think I eventually call it Beta running around. Uh, there's a final fight between the T-Rex the and these two other fucking, well, the T-Rex isn't against one of them. It's against this other T-Rexy fucking thing. They do say the name, but I'm a fucking idiot. I ain't going to be able to pronounce it. And believe it or not, at one stage of my life, I wanted to be a paleontologist. Um, and this other dinosaur that's like basically Wolverine, but a dinosaur. It's fucking bizarre. Um, it looked great. I, I have no issue with seeing the dinosaurs run around. And it was cool seeing them in our environment and how humans interact with them and uh, how they would try to coexist. Because obviously the, the story of this film, well, it was supposed to be. Uh, this film was supposed to be an, an initiate, initiate, initiated and, and insinuated to me that it was about how the coexistence of, of mankind, our current ecosystem, could allow and uh, coexist with dinosaurs. Um, so yeah, and, and the, the final shot as well, one of the final shots is pretty cool because we do see... Uh, animals, regular animals, elephants and birds, and uh, who else did we get? Um, big eye long necks and stuff. Uh, integrated. Uh, these big, I don't know if that were the sperm whales, whales with the big fish dragon dinosaur, dragon dinosaur, the big fish dinosaur thing. It does, it shows you a little montage of them together. We see the, the, the three horns of the elephants walking, what I'm assuming is like Africa or something walking with the sunset in the back. And it, it looks really cool. It looks visually outstanding. The fight at the end's great. Uh, seeing Blue and uh, stuff was amazing. Chris Pratt on his motorbike, which seems to happen in all these films now. He's going to be running alongside Raptors. It's going to happen. But uh, apart from that visuals, the rest of it just goes completely downhill. This, to me, was the biggest frustration I have with it is the fact that it was a Jurassic Park film that literally had no need for the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs were not an integral part of this story. 
they it, this story would still play out and would still go along even if you took the dinosaurs out the dinosaurs were only there to be visually pleasing or add like a little bit of action here or be a little bit of an obstacle they were this whole film was about, was about re retrieving a clone human and big giant grass locusts quite literally i remember seeing them a, a locust looked chris i was like what the fuck it, it was it was about friggin locusts bugs real life bugs that have just been made a bit bigger what the fuck why the fuck is Jurassic Park or Jurassic World about this now? It was just so shit. The story was unbelievably crap. It was... Because basically, it's... We know what's happened. Um, di to the park. Dinosaurs have gotten free. They live among us. We see dinosaurs on the black market. People having uh, illegal farms, breeding them illegally, uh, trading them on the black market and whatnot. That wasn't even a part of the story. They just sort of just chucked it in there to show us. I thought, oh, we're going to spend the film tackling how we're going to coexist and how we're going to live together and what's going to happen. No, it's, oh, there was this human clone made of somebody at one of the facilities and we need her back. Oh, and it turns out the DNA in you cured you from your mother slash original clone's DNA. Oh, Blue, guess what as well? Just because we need to include it, Blue can, is the same. She Her baby is just a clone. Because they didn't need a dad, like, or sperm or whatever to make the baby. It's just made itself. And, but it's like, they spent all the time on that. And they went, oh, yeah, Blue can do that as well. Just so we can chuck it in there so it ties in. It was so unbelievably dumb. And I don't mind dumb films. I am dumb. I love dumb shit. I got the cinema to dis fucking send whatever, you know, real life world shit. And go amongst the fictional, the, the fantasy. But at least have it somewhat... Um, you know, fun to follow. I said to Chris, this is, this is the first time this has happened in a wild, wild, in a wild, but I was genuinely bored. It was too long for what it was. They brought back all these old characters from the original films, even though Jeff Goldblum's been uh, in and out anyway, um, but it's always good to see him. The characters and the, the acting was absolute, believe it or not, was awful. They felt so two-dimensional. It didn't really feel like they give a shit. When they met up with each other, it genuinely didn't feel like they actually really give a shit. Like, uh, at the moment, there's a bit where, uh, I can't remember the name, the two doctors from the first film, uh, they have ended up having a kiss, and then he's like, yes, I'm going with you. And you're like, oh my god! It, everything just felt so. Bad. And they're all talented actors and actresses. The, the the clone girl was a little British girl. I don't know if she's British in real life, but she she was British in the film. And her British voice, her fucking voice, was going right through me. She annoyed the shit out of me. Um, you could have done this film as well, probably without Chris Pratt and the 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 other girl. The stuff would have still been achieved technically, I guess. Um, maybe I'm missing something there for it not to be. But Chris Pratt was there just to shoot stuff and look cool. Um, nobody was really massively significant. They were honestly just all about getting these locusts because this this firm, this place, um, who were making all these weird locusts and shit with the doctor from the original films and stuff. He's usually a bad guy, but he's, he's obviously had a change of art now and he wants to be good. They want to control the ecosystem and the food chain and that's, so they've harnessed these locusts to eat regular crops, not crops that they sell to farmers so that they can control everything. And then they go, oh no, it's not working. We're going to make people really hungry. We better stop. Uh, oh, but here you go. Here's some dinosaur fights. At one point, the film turns into like a weird Jason Bourne, Esque James Bond action thriller. I, we've got earpieces and we're in the comms bits. It's like, what the fuck? The moment where Chris Pratt's in, uh, what is it, Malta? They're in whatever city it is. And they're, they're in this black market sort of dealing animals and whatnot. It was all pointless. It was purely put there just so they had this like sequence of, of action to show us. It was so two-dimensional. It was absolutely awful. There's a bit where the, the two of the badass dinosaurs from the last couple of films come out and they're all just, just chopping people or biting people's heads off in the background. Chris Pratt's just having a, a fight with this other lad and there's people surrounding him, like cheering on this fight and there's dinosaurs in the back killing people. Why aren't they running in hysterics and panic and whatnot? They're like, yeah, you know, like a cock fight uh, and they all sit there and they chuck the money in and whatnot. It was that. 
and I'm thinking, what are you doing? If there's two dinosaurs behind you, just what the fuck? It was absolutely, to be fair, the more I think about it, I said to Chris when I left, I was like, yeah, it wasn't amazing, but I didn't hate it. It was okay. And the more I was thinking about it, it actually really was really, really, really shit. It was really bad. And I, I'm being honest when I said to Chris, I said, Chris, that's the worst film I've seen all year. It was fucking god awful. But Chris is on the other side. And again, it's, it's, it's not that he's wrong. He has a different opinion. He obviously looks at it different to me because uh, I can be overly optimistic with stuff that I love. Um, he said he absolutely adored it. He said he, he thought it was amazing. He, he absolutely loved it, which is which I'm, I'm glad he went in because he loves the, the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World franchise. Um, I'm glad he, he didn't leave disappointed. But as, as someone who else, I do love the, the franchise. I, I left feeling heartbroke. It was... It was it was so bad. It was so lackluster. The, 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 the character, um, the characters and their arcs and the stories and how they played off each other was so shit. They brought in this aeroplane lady, and yeah, she was cool and she looked badass and she could fly a plane, but she, she just did stuff for the sake of doing stuff. It was it was so flat and awful and boring and pointless and about fucking bugs. Ah, what happened to me? T Rexes and shit. There was a moment where the you know the the big wing not the, they haven't got wings but the the dinosaurs that have the little flaps out their necks come in and they they kill a lad uh, in, in a very horror esque way which is quite cool. Like I said, visually some parts of it were still really badass. Some parts of it looked fucking cool, and then you get back to the real story and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we're back to just all the shit. So yeah, visuals. It's it's getting a a very flat. Four, three, three and a half, three and a half out of ten for me. And but Chris kept saying uh, the worst thing that like, the bad because obviously I want Chris to uh, explain why he loved it again. Because not that he's wrong, I just want to know what, what what he saw that I didn't. Um, he kept saying, "I know it wasn't the best. I know it was a bit flat. I know it was a bit boring, but I loved it." And I'm thinking to myself, "Well, if you thought it was flat, you thought it was boring, you thought it was the one of the worst or the worst, what makes you still love it?" And I think it's just because he loves the franchise. He's just he doesn't want there to be a bad film and ruin his franchise, which is fair enough. I think subconsciously I've done that plenty of times. I think, but yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't great visuals. Let's be honest. But yeah, Jurassic World Dominion is getting a three and a half out of ten from me. But come back next week where we'll we'll, we'll have actual entertainment news and we can talk a bit more and give Chris's thoughts and opinions on the film. Uh, there is a slight chance I will send it again because if somebody needs to go watch it. I will go with them um, and, and, and watch. Uh, there's a lad at work who's got to watch it. He's so excited. I can't wait to get his opinion because I'm going to go up to him and just say, here's what I think and you can tell me what you think. So blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, visuals, if you've seen it already, let me know what you think and let you know, let, let you know what you think. No, let me know what you think of my review. If you agree or disagree or whatnot, because we can have a fun Jurassic co uh, conversation that comes below. But visuals, we'll leave it there. That was your spoiler heavy review for Jurassic World. A little brief mention of uh, Black Adam, OB, Miss Marvel. Uh, go check out all of them. Well, the trailer and the two shows, if you haven't already. And apart from that, visuals, thank you so much for watching. You guys are literally the fucking best. Rumors keep being you, and keep on keeping on.